Here's a familiar sentence you might have said with a smile. I'm not addicted to coffee. I just enjoy it. But there's a tiny catch. What if that enjoyment has been quietly reshaping how your brain handles energy? Not in a dramatic movie way, no explosions, but like a slow change in traffic lights around your city. Imagine your brain as a huge network of intersections. Every intersection has traffic lights controlling the flow of tiredness and alertness. Caffeine doesn't add new roads. It just forces certain lights to stay green, even when they should turn red. So your brain's cars, your signals, start racing. Everyone moves faster, but no one follows the normal rhythm anymore. Or imagine wearing tinted sunglasses indoors. At first they feel cool. Eventually you forget you're wearing them, until you take them off and suddenly the world looks different. Brighter, sharper, more natural. That's what quitting coffee feels like. Because here's the twist. Most people don't know what their untinted energy looks like anymore. Caffeine has been filtering everything. Sleep pressure, alertness, mood shifts, without asking for permission. And when you quit for 30 days, your brain goes through a predictable, science-backed reset. Some parts feel uncomfortable, some parts feel surprising, and some parts feel like waking up for the first time in years. But science tells a far more layered story. Let's break it down from day one to day 30. Coffee is the world's favorite ritual. According to research from Harvard School of Public Health, more than 80% of adults consume caffeine daily. Many people drink the equivalent of three or five cups without realizing it. But here's where things get complicated. Caffeine was never meant to be a constant daily companion. It was meant to be like a fire alarm used occasionally to activate your alert systems, not pulled every morning at 7 a.m. Let's use the first new metaphor, your brain as a city grid. Adenosine, your sleep pressure chemical, is like evening traffic. It builds up naturally throughout the day. Caffeine interrupts that rhythm. It forces traffic to keep moving. Cars never slow down. Intersections never rest. It feels productive until the moment the system collapses. Here's the second metaphor. A smartphone battery that isn't calibrated. Imagine your phone constantly showing 50% battery, no matter what the real number is. You think you have energy. You push harder. You keep going. But underneath, the battery is draining. That's what chronic caffeine does. Your internal battery meter becomes unreliable. Third metaphor, a national park with warning signs. Your body puts up small do not enter signs. Headaches, irritability, poor sleep, energy dips. Caffeine walks in and quietly flips the signs around. You wander deeper into exhaustion without noticing. Fourth metaphor, a remote control with sticky buttons. The button that boosts your energy? Caffeine presses it harder and harder. Eventually, the button gets stuck. You need caffeine just to return to normal. Now here's the subtle fear point, and it's backed by research. Johns Hopkins scientists found that daily caffeine changes adenosine receptor density. A Stanford study reported caffeine disrupts the daily cortisol rhythm, flattening the morning peak. University of Colorado research proved caffeine consumed six hours before bed reduces sleep by one full hour. Over weeks and months, your baseline shifts. Your daytime alertness becomes artificial. Your true energy, your real baseline, gets buried. So here's the question. If caffeine is changing the map of your mental city, what happens when you let the traffic flow naturally again for 30 days?
Let's break down the 30-day transformation using simple science and clear visuals. Adenosine, the natural fatigue flow. Adenosine builds up in your brain all day. It's your internal sunset. It tells your body that it's time to rest. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors. It doesn't reduce adenosine. It simply locks the doors. Imagine adenosine as tourists trying to enter a museum. Caffeine is the security guard saying, closed for renovation. Eventually, a long line forms outside. When caffeine wears off, all the tourists rush inside at once. That heavy crash you feel. Nature Neuroscience published research showing that with repeated caffeine use, your brain adds more adenosine receptors. Your brain tries to compensate. This makes you more sensitive to tiredness without caffeine. Dopamine, the motivation pathway. Caffeine slightly boosts dopamine signaling, not as powerfully as addictive drugs, but enough to matter. Think of dopamine as a tour guide with a megaphone. Caffeine hands the guide a louder, shinier megaphone. Everything feels a bit more exciting, more rewarding. But over time, the tour guide gets used to the new volume. When you quit caffeine, the megaphone disappears. Suddenly, everything feels too quiet. That mild depression or lack of motivation in the first week. Cortisol, the morning signal. Your natural cortisol rhythm peaks in the morning. Caffeine interferes with that peak. Imagine a dam controlling the flow of water. Cortisol opens the dam smoothly in the morning, wakes you up, and energizes you. Caffeine barges in and yanks the dam open at the wrong time. The Journal of Psychopharmacology found caffeine increases cortisol even in habitual users. Over time, this can flatten your rhythm. You might feel groggy in the morning and wired in the afternoon. Sleep, the true reset system. Caffeine affects sleep in two major ways. One, it reduces your deep sleep percentage. Two, it delays your internal clock. University of Colorado researchers found that caffeine late in the day delays melatonin release by 40 minutes. Imagine your brain as a team of construction workers repairing buildings at night. Caffeine keeps tapping them on the shoulder, saying, Hey, stay half awake. Keep checking your phone. They can't focus. The repairs remain unfinished. What happens when you quit coffee? Days 1-3, the fog zone. Headaches, heavy fatigue, mood swings, irritability, brain fog. Your brain suddenly lets all those waiting tourists, adenosine, inside. The lines overflow. Your city is crowded and slow. Blood flow increases in the brain. This causes the withdrawal headache. Dopamine signals dip. Your internal tour guide sits down, confused. Cortisol loses its artificial boost. Mornings feel slower. This stage is temporary but intense. Days 414. The Recalibration. Receptors begin normalizing sleep improves, morning grogginess fades, mood stabilizes, afternoon crashes soften. Your city's traffic lights start returning to their original timing. The intersections breathe again. Your sleep becomes deeper because melatonin is no longer delayed. Your internal battery meter, once broken, starts reading correctly again. You're not more tired. You're accurately reading your tiredness for the first time in years. Days 15 to 30 the new baseline. This is the golden stage. Energy becomes steady. Motivation returns naturally. Mental clarity increases. Anxiety drops. Mood becomes more balanced. Sleep stabilizes. Your brain begins running on its natural rhythm. Not the caffeine-tinted version. Adenosine receptors return to near-normal density. Cortisol rhythm 
resets. Your tour guide, Dopamine, speaks confidently at a natural volume. Many people describe this stage as, I feel clear, not hyped, just awake. That's the real baseline. When you quit coffee, your body sends quiet signals, not alarms, more like whispers. 1. Early morning heaviness. This is normal. Your cortisol peak is recalibrating. Your dam is adjusting its water flow. 2. Throbbing pressure headaches. Blood vessels are dilating again. Your system is rediscovering natural control. 3. A random wave of sadness or irritation. Dopamine is adjusting its megaphone volume. This is temporary. 4. Increased yawning. Adenosine is no longer locked out. It's flowing the way it should. 5. Strange, vivid dreams. Deep sleep rebounds. Your repair crew works overtime. 6. Sudden thirst. Caffeine's diuretic effect is gone. Your body is setting new hydration patterns. If you're thinking, why is my body reacting so much? You're not alone. Most people underestimate how deeply caffeine has woven itself into their biological rhythms. Have you ever skipped your morning coffee and felt like a different person? That's not a personal flaw. That's physiology. But here's the good news. These whispers slowly fade and something better moves in. A 30-day caffeine reset is not about losing energy. It's about meeting your real energy, maybe for the first time. Let's make the transition smoother. Tip 1. The Hydration Anchor Start each morning with 300-500 ml ladder of water. This supports blood flow and reduces withdrawal headaches. A study from the European Hydration Institute confirmed that hydration improves morning alertness, even without caffeine. Tip 2. Gradual step down, if needed. If you drink three cups daily, decrease by 25% every two, three days. This reduces shock to your system. Tip 3. Eat a slow-release breakfast. Oats, fruit, nuts, whole grains. These stabilize glucose and prevent early crashes. Tip 4. Prioritize morning sunlight. Ten minutes of sunlight boosts cortisol naturally. A real non-caffeine wake-up. Tip 5. Replace the ritual, not the stimulant. Warm water with lemon, herbal tea, decaf, or simply the same mug with a calmer drink. Your brain loves the routine more than the caffeine. Tip 6. Track sleep for 30 days. Most people see easier falling asleep, fewer night wake-ups, deeper stages of sleep, smoother morning energy. A Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine study found that removing caffeine for just two weeks significantly improved sleep efficiency and daytime alertness. This is the moment you realize something powerful. Balance is not restriction. It's restoration. It's strength. You're not giving up coffee forever. You're discovering who you are without it. If anything in this video surprised you, hit subscribe and join The Science Effects. Here we explore the hidden science behind everyday habits with simple visuals, stick figure metaphors, and the truth your body wishes you knew. And if you want the next transformation, watch our video. What happens if you eat too much sugar? It connects perfectly with this one. Now here's the final twist. When you quit coffee for 30 days, you're not punishing your body. You're giving it room to breathe, to stabilize, to speak clearly again. Your cortisol finds its rhythm. Your dopamine finds its natural volume. Your sleep finds its depth. Your body whispers one quiet sentence. Thank you for letting me reset. You might return to coffee afterward. You might not. Either way, your system remembers the break. Your baseline becomes cleaner. Your energy becomes honest.
Now I want to hear from you. Have you ever tried quitting coffee? What was day one like? What was the hardest hour? Share your story below. Like, subscribe, and send this video to someone who says, Coffee doesn't affect me. And remember, this video is educational, not medical advice. Talk to a professional for personalized guidance. See you next time. Stay curious. Stay balanced. Stay human.